Hi, my name is Sam, and I work for the University of Oregon Outdoor Program. And I'm one of the co-founders of the Willamette River Festival, which happens in August here in Alton Baker Park. I'm also committed to getting folks out on our beautiful rivers and doing it safely. This route involves paddling up the Canoe Canal and down the Willamette River, making an entire loop. We're standing here at the starting point in Alton Baker Park. It is important to note that we are on Kalapuya Ilihi, the ancestral homeland of the Kalapuya people who were forcibly removed from their homes in the 1850s. This paddling route travels through the Willamette Natural Area, which was designated to honor Kalapuya people past, present, and future. You can see the full land acknowledgement on the Willamette River Festival website. This unique paddling route is a Eugene gem with lots of solitude, wildlife, and beautiful views, and some fun white water. It's also a unique opportunity to be able to paddle a loop on a river system. We will cover some best practices for paddling in this type of environment, and also cover some specific requirements for doing this route for the paddle cross race as part of the Willamette River Festival. You can check out more information about the race on the Willamette River Festival website. It is important to follow all laws pertaining to watercraft. These are established to keep you safe while paddling on the water. Wear a properly fitting PFD or personal flotation device, also known as a life jacket, that is suitable for whitewater. Make sure that your life jacket is adjusted properly and that it's appropriate for your weight and size. It's also required by law to carry an audible device on each boat, such as a whistle. As of January 1st, 2020, an access waterway permit is required for all watercraft over 9 feet long. You can get your permit online at the ODFW website. As mentioned before, and can be seen here in the short video clip, there is up to class two whitewater on the paddle cross route. So you may be asking yourself, what is the best boat to take? So this really comes down to personal skill, the type of paddling you like to do, and what your goals are for the trip. Here, I'm in a 12 foot, 10 inch sea kayak that's made out of plastic rather than fiberglass, so it's a little more durable for hitting any rocks. It's long enough that I have the speed to get up the canoe canal against the current, but short enough that it has the maneuverability to work around the rapids. A canoe can also be a great option. The only thing to consider is that you need some type of flotation, and it's best if the hull is made out of a plastic material like Royal X. White water kayaks made out of plastic are also great options, especially for the downriver section. They can, however, be challenging to paddle upstream against the current in the canoe canal, but can certainly work. Plastic sit-on-top kayaks are a fantastic way to get out. They take less skill and have a lower risk factor than a sit-inside kayak, but they're fast enough and made out of plastic, so can definitely work. Plastic sea kayaks can also work, and they have plenty of speed to get up the canoe canal although their longer length and less rocker make them less maneuverable. Sea kayaks made out of a fiberglass material are maybe not the best option, simply because you will most likely hit rocks along the way. Something made out of plastic is certainly better. Surf skis are also an excellent option and these hold the record for the fastest time to complete the paddle cross route. They're easy to get in and out of, are lightweight and are very fast. Another consideration is to have something with a raisable rudder or raisable skeg. The purpose of flotation inside the boat is to displace water allowing the boat to float higher if full of water. This could be in the form of a float bag like what Sam is demonstrating here, or bulkheads that separate the boat into sections or potentially a foam filled section. 
If you enjoy stand-up paddling, you can also do the paddle cross route on an SUP. This is just a general plastic SUP and fitted with the correct fin, it can absolutely work. An inflatable SUP is also a good option because it's lighter for the portages and it's also very durable for hitting any rocks along the way. You just have to pump it up to the desired stiffness. A touring SUP is also a good option because it has a lot more speed for getting up the canal. It's just a little more challenging for the way down. Also consider what type of a material it's made out of. Also considering the shallow section on the paddle cross route, a short fin with a long rake is a better option. Additionally, if you like to use a leash with your SUP, the only system that's appropriate for the paddle cross route is a torso worn quick release. Ankle and calf leashes are not appropriate. Here is a first person view of running one of the rapids along the route, just so you have an idea and can make an educated decision about what's going to work for you. We recommend that each paddler consider carrying a spare paddle in case you lose your main paddle or it breaks along the route. Show respect for the natural environment at all times. And remember, this route travels through the Willamette Natural Area, which is set aside to protect the natural environment and focus on quiet, non-motorized recreation. Also, as you paddle up the canoe canal, please respect private property along this route. It's always the best practice to provide assistance to any other boater in need. But remember, always keep personal safety as the number one factor. Keep in mind that part of this route is in real whitewater and foot entrapments are a real hazard. Avoid foot entrapments by not standing up in moving water unless it is below your knees or you're in a calm eddy along the edge of the river. If you are doing this as part of the Willamette River Festival, please watch the Paddle Cross route video on the festival website. This shows the exact route the racers are required to follow for the race. If you have any questions around safety or the requirements for this stretch of river, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for watching and enjoy this hidden gem of our city.